Good everyone and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we will be covering caustics for tune shading in cycles. Oh yeah! Now unfortunately we do not have the, the super awesome distorted noise texture in cycles, which sucks, but whatever. Uh, we will be working around that. So stay tuned for that. So first of all we need to switch to cycles render. I need to unify these monkeys by using the same material. It's not a have to, it's just easier that way. Use nodes, make it a tune shader. You can just leave this as is. And nothing fancy about that. Same here. You can use this as a diffuse or a tune shader. It depends on whether it's a background element, foreground. You choose. And of course we have to chuck one of these lights. We only need one. We definitely want it to be using nodes, so we can give it a slight blue color, because that's the color we usually associate with water. And of course we need to adjust it slightly. So I'm going to put it at an angle facing the monkeys like that. And I'm going to be tilting it a little bit that way as well. That looks cool. So if you were to check this out in rendered view, you would see the semi-shiny looking monkeys right there. But this is not good enough for tune shading. We have a few settings to adjust here, so I'm going to be chucking my default render layers for Blender Render because they just don't suit this. Just take out the hair one for the moment. Uh, let's see. Okay, we definitely want to turn freestyle on. I'm using my default settings for freestyle, which you can copy if you want to. It's not a must. I'm going to leave the line thickness at 1.3. I find for this type of scene um, that the lines kind of disappear if they're black. Uh, of course, they're completely opaque. Just take out that modifier so the, the object's individual freestyle colors don't affect it. Of course, chaining, same object, rounded points, and of course, geometry is default, texture is default. The only things I do take out is crease, edge mark, external contour, material boundary, and extra contour. Sometimes I use group to exclude uh, some things if there's like a lot of objects in the same view that don't need freestyle. Okay, now we get to go to our sampling. We're only going to be using five. For the preview, we're only going to be using one for the sake of speed. Uh, we don't need volume sampling since we're not going to be using volume. Transparency, only one because we're going to be stenciling our caustics. Maximum bounces, zero all the way. For transmission, you can add one just for the sake of uh, keeping everything working. If you need more, add more. Don't stick to this and say it didn't work just because you did a monkey see, monkey do type thing. Really understand how it works. And if you don't understand how it works, uh, there's a lot of information on the Blender manual, so that will be um, linked in the description as well. Post-processing, we will be using compositing. Baking, nope. Freestyle, yes. Uh, sampling or recovered. Output, just going to be an image sequence and 30 frames per second. That is Q. Now we need to adjust our sun lamp. So go to your sun lamp and make it super, super small, three zeros and a one. Maximum bounces, uh, bounces of zero. Uh, up the light by making it about five. I am happy with this. I wonder why this thing is so dark and the monkey's so bright. Let's see. Eh, doesn't matter. Anyway, let's go to the world settings. We definitely want ambient occlusion. We only want it to be a very low amount, just so it breaks the, the super darkness of the shadows. Distance, zero. Ray visibility, we only want it visible on the camera itself, so we have a background. The plane itself has to be visible. Cycle settings, as you can see. And I think we are good. So now I'm going to go into the camera and adjust it. Taking it up, rotating it like this, and 
a little bit away so we can actually see the plane. That's good. Uh, one thing that you need to make sure is that your objects are on the same layer. Just to uh, prevent light from conflicting. I mean, you can see over here that it's not really working as well as it should. I mean, just look at that. This plane is supposed to be just as white as the monkeys, but for some reason it's not catching the light in just the right way. Doesn't matter, we'll just be continuing anyway. So we'll just rename this plane floor, and we're going to be adding another plane, and this will be our stencil for caustics. So taking it up, calling this caustic stencil. Of course, we don't want it to be visible to the camera or the diffuse or the glossy. We only want the transmission and the shadow. Let's prefer only the shadow. Okay, so now I need to just do that. Okay. Remember to make sure that this stencil does not interfere with your camera or any other objects. It has to be above and big enough to cover your scene with the light that you need. So I'm making sure it's above the camera, so we actually do get our freestyle lines and all that other fun stuff. Okay, so if you go and you add a new material, let's call this uh, Core Sticks Stencil. Oof. Uh, you can leave it at Diffuse, switch to your Node Editor, Materials, press Home so you can see them, and input a texture coordinate. We are going to be adding an empty, so don't worry about that. Add two mapping nodes, uh, 90, 60, and 50. Both has to be on 0.5 in terms of scale. I'm just giving you default values. You're welcome to mess with these. I'm just telling you what I used. So this is sort of like a, a running start, if you will. <laughs> OK, add two wave textures. Like so, scale 0.5, scale 0.5, distortion at 60 for both. And these have to be added over each other. No, added. 100%. And that will form part of our... Um, let me just... Get that transparency shader. Hold on. Uh, transparent BDF. Okay, so also add a mix shader so that we can make it semi transparent. And we can stick that in there as well. You can leave it at 0.5, it's a very good value. Yeah. So let's chuck the diffuse node over there. I think we should be good here. I just want to double check with the original project after I save. Okay, the detail has to be 30, sorry, 3 over there, and the detail scale has to be 0.8. And that, friends, gives us something that looks like this, because that's definitely, oh, that's the problem, that's the problem, it's not the, the, the textures and stuff, it's because we don't have something to scale it with, that's my bad. Okay, so empty. Uh, core sticks. I hate it when I miss something like that. <laughs> okay, head back to your node editor. You can just reconfigure this thing back to normal, like it's supposed to be, and make sure our empty is in there. And now if we go back, we should actually be seeing some lines, just like that. That's great. Uh, one thing that I didn't put in here yet was the... Um, color ramps, so I'm just going to be adding those quickly. So all you need to do is get a converter, color ramp, same thing on the second one, set it to constant for the most tune-esque style. If you want to, you can make these different thicknesses. It's fine by me, it's absolutely artist's choice. And I can see why I would be offended on the way you want to do it. <laughs> uh, that looks cool. I wonder what's with this plane. It's just not 
receiving any light whatsoever. Let's chuck it and add a new one. Yeah, that's better. Weird. Okay, so step into the camera. And this is what you will see. So let's quickly animate our caustics. Select a very small segment, one that your computer will breeze through, absolutely just breathe and breeze through. Let's re release it from render view. Just want to take that out of sight for Oh no, we have to leave it inside. Uh, get the empty and move it. So go location, move it down, location. Uh, graph editor, usual story, same thing as in Blender Render, extrapolation. Okay, let's see. Okay, set it to AV Sync, double check the frame rate. Let's hit playback. I think that's fast enough. I really do. Okay, now if you're curious about what that looks like on the monkeys. That looks amazing. So let's just hit save. And save again. And let's hit render to check our freestyle. Obviously compositing still needs a little work. <laughs> so let's hit home and clear up most of it there. Clear that frame, place that in there, chuck that. And now we have the option of actually, what's the word, um, adding just a little bit of flair to it. So one way you can do that is by using the color ramp. Let's just increase our light source here, it's a little bit too dull. Let's hit render again. That's better. So what we can do is we can uh, take our original image, so we can just view it quickly. There we go. With a color ramp and sharpen the color ramp up so we pretty much only end up with our caustic lines as far as possible. Something like that will do. Take a blur node, fast Gaussian, make it about two, and add this over uh, let's blur it over the, the final node. Okay, let's chuck that little viewer node and say add. So if you zoom into that, you will see this. So with, without, with, without. As you can see, with is a lot better. <laughs> So that is pretty much it. That's how you can add caustics to a scene in Cycles with uh, Toon Shading. I hope this has been a huge blessing to you guys. God help me um, actually get this right because I mean, wow. Cycles is definitely not built for Toon Shading. <laughs> so um, I hope you guys are able to use this in your projects. Have a great one and God bless you.